Hi, welcome to Linda's TV show. If it is your first time of stopping by and you like this channel, you like the video, please subscribe and you put on your notification bell on. This is very, very important as it enables you to know when I upload a new video. I present information across the globe, especially Nigeria to be precise. And I appreciate each and every one of you who stop by each day to watch my videos. May God Almighty bless you. So today, let, so let's get into today's video. Well, we've been joined this evening by Dr. Osman Bukeje, who is a political historian and former member of the House of Representatives. Just also give us some fresh perspectives on how we can navigate through this murky waters of insecurity. Good evening and thank you for joining us on Sunday Politics. Now, we've, we've talked largely about the government's performance uh, regarding security, or you could say insecurity. Uh, I know that you are from Katsina State. We've just talked about the rescuing of the Kankara boys. And what still bothers a lot of people is how this has lingered for a long time. You are a historian. You have studied this. You have even published works regarding this. So when you look at all this happening, what do you see? Well, Kaede, thank you very much for uh, allowing me to so participate in this very important conversation. I think when you use the word linger, I, I think you are underestimating the uh, depth of the crisis. This crisis is not lingering, it's worsening. And you can see it in the, you know, f uh, the increase in the frequency of attacks, in the quantum of attacks, and you can see how these bandits and... Uh, insurgents are becoming emboldened and becoming you know sort of claiming more grounds and and we are really heading into a very serious crisis so i i don't want us to underestimate it you know in, in we, we 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 need to like uh, be, be fair to what is exactly happening now how did we get here it's very clear uh, i'm glad the last speaker talked about uh kpis key performance indicators now let me make this you know uh, statement which is very well acknowledged that governance in the 21st century is a corporate scientific business you have got to have very clear objectives you have got to have uh, uh, break down these objectives to targets with timelines and you have got to have key performance indicators in fact even ministers that you uh, appoint or head of government prostatals, they don't just simply collect an appointment letter like I've seen we do in this government and even previous governments. No, they always come with or they should always come with a key performance indicator so that at the end of the year or whatever time or frequency that uh, we choose, we evaluate and find out are we actually achieving those objectives that we have set out to achieve or are we not? And this way we can be scientific in what we are doing. But this situation where you apply, I mean, you just appoint someone and then he does what he likes for as long as he wants to and, and, and nothing really changes. Things are worse and you don't do anything. You can't achieve anything. And, and what's the point of government if you cannot secure life and property? So we are here because our governance uh, structures are faulty in the first place. And the you know, recruitment, uh, leadership recruitment mechanism within the political parties are faulty. The political parties themselves, they lack content, they lack conscience, they lack uh, 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 what you might call uh, they, 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 they lack what it takes to deliver because, mm -hmm. th and, and I'm here talking about not just the ruling party, but even the opposition party. In fact, a lot of the parties, you know, in this country really are not there to solve the problems of this country. Well, they are quite there an to important bring point. People in power, they, 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 they acquire the, 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 the the, the, the perks of office, but they don't deliver. We, are, we, we, we have not taken the issue of governance seriously as we should. Well, quite an important point you have raised and would like to explore that in a moment, but we need to take this quick break. So please join us again. Hey, welcome back to the program where 
in our concluding moment. It's a final lap, you can call it. And still joining us on the program is Dr. Usman Bougadjeh, political historian, as well as former House or member of the House of Representatives, joins us from our Buja studio, as well as Mr. Kabira Damu, a security expert. Well, Dr. Bougadjeh, just before we went on that break, you, you touched on the issue of governance. Well, you talked politics and then led into governance. It's hard to separate both. But, you know, regarding governance, I mean, you have partly been a part of this government before it came into power. And I recall in 2016, during an interview with South African media, you said that this government has made remarkable progress in the area of security, specifically terrorism. Now, that was in 2016, but in 2020, you believe the government has failed. In fact, you've called for some drastic measures. So what changed within that period? Well, kind of is everybody's knowledge now. Immediately this government came, they took measures, things improved. But it didn't last long and it wasn't sustained. And what has happened thereafter is that things have deteriorated to a level that was inconceivable at that particular time. And that then speaks to the fact that this government has no particular uh, 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 government or, or, or governance uh, uh, framework, meaning they they were not evaluating uh, their, their 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 performance. They were not uh, uh, making the necessary inputs that that they have to make. In fact, they were not prioritizing competence in both their appointment and in the way they have sustained. Uh, uh, the, the security uh, structure. There has been a lot of calls that they have to change the structure because the structure is not, is not delivering anything. In fact, we are getting into far more serious situation than before they took over. Because when they took over, the major security challenge was the insurgency in the Northeast. And now we have got the banditry in the Northwest that has basic, basically taken over a good part of the Northwest and the North Central, other parts of the country. So, so certainly it shows that they have lost grip very early and they have lost grip very early uh, uh, among other reasons you know, is the fact that they have not prioritized competence. Their appointments appear to be based on loyalty rather than competence. And when you appoint someone and he doesn't deliver, the next responsible thing for you to do is to get him out of that place and bring somebody more competent because you have a target. And if you don't have a target, then you are not really governing. You, you are just simply sitting there enjoying the parks of office and then using media and other sources to simply gloss over your own images. So look, you have got to uh, 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 evaluate yourself every now and then if you want to achieve. Uh, if you cannot evaluate yourself, there is nothing else you can achieve. I think time and again you have spoken about appointments. In fact, just before the break, you said there were some people appointed and they're doing what they like. A lot of people have offered solutions. Some have said uh, the service chiefs must go at various levels. In fact, some have called for the presidents to resign, something that's drastic. Where lies the solution for you? The solution is basically that those who are presently in government must listen. They must listen to citizens. They must listen to experts. They, they, there is no point in this arrogance. You claim you know everything and you are not delivering. For goodness sake, if things are worsening, you should listen. If you cannot engage and you cannot be accountable, there is no point for you to remain there. This is a democratic you know, uh, dispensation. It, 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 it's, it's not a military dictatorship. It, 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 is, it is not uh, some kind of slave uh, plantation where the slave master can do as he wishes. Look, you, we have got to, and we have got uh, 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 institutions of government that are supposed to check and balance their, their executive. They are not doing their job. They have called for resolution. These resolutions have been ignored by the executive arm of government. And, and they are sitting down there doing nothing, like lame ducks. So if this system uh, 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 is not working, then they are basically inviting citizens to pour out on the street. Because if experts speak, civil society leaders speak, the institutions of government that are supposed to check uh, and balance the executive arm of government speak, and the president and his team have chosen to ignore 
everybody and to do as they wish, then certainly what they are saying is that, well, do your worst, kind of. So they must engage. They must come out. Why did the president visit the parliament? To explain. Why should he not? It's not a constitutional matter. It's a moral obligation that he owes this country. So why should he not? If the president cannot address the parliament, then they should tell us the president cannot address the parliament. Then what is he doing there? It's simple. Well, Dr. Bugatti, we're in our final moments, but let me see if I can get uh, Mr. Kabiru's closing thoughts on this, if you can, in 30 minutes. I mean, he has expressed some of the issues he has with the government. He says this government is not listening. Is that the way this government comes across to you as well? Um, no, uh, not, not at all. Um, he's my elder. I respect him a lot. But I also want to mention that there are uh, centrifugal forces that play in Nigeria. Some of these centrifugal forces are, are, are political, and he is of the political class. Um, these centrifugal forces, the more they pull, the more, unfortunately, we would see this type of situation in Nigeria. I think, if anything, we should join hands with the government. When I hear government, I ask myself, are we referring only to the federal government? Are we denying that at the state level there are huge issues too that need to be addressed? So I think this centrifugal forces, including the political uh, class, would need to realize that our desperate nature and the uneasy existence that um, sustains in Nigeria mm. is further pulled apart by um, you know, stands like well, the type Mr. Damu, that will be expanding our conversation uh, into the talk about giving states more power when it comes to security, but we're out of time. But the good thing is this conversation continues. I'd like to thank you so much, Mr. Kabira Damu, security expert, as well as Dr. Osman Bugaje, political historian and former member of the House of Representatives. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us on the program. Welcome to my channel. If this is your first time or first day of coming across my YouTube channel or seeing my face, you are highly welcome. Let me comment to my next canal. My name is Linda Chukwezi. It comment as Miguel. Click on that red button that says subscribe and you turn on the notification bell so that you'll be able to get information okay. on the Bis video. zum nächsten Video und einen schönen Tag. Tschüss. Tschüss. Bis mein yes, subscribe to Linda TV show. What are you waiting for? Click on that red button that says subscribe. You turn on the notification bell so that you'll be getting more updates from me. Leave your, your comment down below and share this video with your friends, families, and colleagues until we meet again in my next video. Bye-bye.